What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my Football Manager Save. This is episode number 89. And today returning with my first game in the Champions League with Borussia Dortmund. It's faced Lazio away at the Stadio Olimpico and also Hoffenheim away in the Bundesliga 2. Before we get to the games though, shout out to all me out of camera. And also some more transfer business and another teenager arriving as well. Let's get to that first. And I said there was a new teenager coming in. There's actually two. Uh, we'll begin with the two departures on deadline day. First, Obradovic has gone to Wolfsburg for a very small transfer fee of £2.8 million. Pounds. Totally fine with that. Obviously, he's a homegrown player, but due to the, uh, the re-signings of Mukoko and Mane, we had enough now. We could afford to sell one. And uh, yeah, Obradovic, £2.8 million. He, he played a lot of games for us off the bench last season, but that was because we had basically no debt whatsoever. I mean, there was a time where I thought, I'm going to have to lace my boots off and get on there because we had such little depth he's gone and i'm totally fine with that i'm not sure he'll turn into an amazing player now at 24 years old and we loaned out the icelandic left back we bought it from Ajax as well uh john benedictson it ruins the homegrown uh status but he's off to a great start there at union berlin in the bundesliga and assisting a goal in just his first six games so yeah, you know, do you remember what happened with a dragon? Like, we loaned him out, and at Leicester and Sassuolo, he came back an unbelievable player. Well, with Benedictson, he could still become a really decent left-back for us, but, like I said, it, it ruins the homegrown train that status, but... I think it's worth it, because otherwise he just wasn't going to develop here in our youth team, getting no minutes in the senior team whatsoever. But the new signings were as follows. Uh, Yanis Papaz coming in from Bayer Leverkusen uh, as a 16-year-old. Um, dual nationality uh, with Greece as well as Germany as well. So comes in young enough to get homegrown and trained at a club. Bought it for £5 million. It, again, for a 16-year-old, £5 million might seem like a gamble, but he's got really, really good mental stats, and the scouts are quite big on him as well. So I thought worth the money as we had the cash. And we want to keep on bringing in those young talents to continue to trend at Dortmund out in real life. And also a young goalkeeper that I'm very excited about. Jorge Luis Alfonso, the new Guillermo Ochoa. Just like Ochoa came through the America Academy uh, in Mexico. Became a regular after just one year. Already made his senior debut at Mexico for just 16 years old. And we signed him for nine and a three quarter million pound transfer fee. I was looking at him last season and I was tempted to bring him in. In the end, I opted against it. This season, I decided to bite the bullet. He looks really, really good as a young goalkeeper. You know, physically not fantastic, but mentally, 13 positioning, 17 vision, very handy on a sweeper keeper, but also 16 one-on-ones, 14 reflexes, 15 command of area. He's pretty solid, and already six caps of senior level at just 18 years old as well. So he's in for 9.75 million, and again, it's it's quite a lot to pay for a teenager, but he's only going to get better. So yeah, quite excited to have the newer Choa, as we had the, uh, the real Choa with Bournemouth, now we've got his successor. And of course, in the last episode, you saw our fight back against Leverkusen on the opening day of the Bundesliga away at the Bayern in a 2-0 down battle back to level at 2-2. Then there's a VAR controversy. We thought we'd won it. In the end, had to settle for a point. And of course, the big 5-2 at home to Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, two games off camera, both in the league, both wins with two clean sheets as well. Starting off a 4-0 win away uh, against Wolfsburg. Heading into the game, Giovanni Reiner opened the scoring three minutes in before the Dragon got his first of the season. And what a goal! It was bending in from just outside the area to make it 2 0. Uh, Reina got another one with 10 minutes to go, and then Araujo tapped in in the 94th minute off the bench in a very comfortable 4 0 victory. And following that, a 2 0 win back at home against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, scored at either end of the game here. First down to the company, heading in a Romero cross, and then with four minutes to go, once again, Araujo off the bench after Mukoko fired a blank, getting onto the end of a long, hopeful ball from Romero and half volleying it in with a week effort into the top corner as we extend our run in the Bundesliga. No losses in four, three wins in four, and right now second place to, guess who, Bayern Munich, top of the table, four wins in their first four games. So despite our very impressive start, we're still playing catch-up to Bayern. Even four games in, this two-point gap feels like a ten-point gap. They're just that good. And also, I need to show you this guy as well. Oh, my God. The young German talent is insane, man. Seriously. Top scorer in the Bundesliga with 6-4 in four at the Veltins. Michael Bielfeld. Unbelievable young talent. Didn't have the cash to bring him in after the signings of Mukoko and Cruiser and Mane. But 18 years old. Turns 19 in October. 
that unambitious personality is the only real negative. And I suppose for it to be fair, the, uh, the poor jumping and uh, lack of strength as well. But even so, what a talent. What a talent. So much young talent in Germany in this save right now. It's amazing to see it. But uh, heading into the first game, uh, it is indeed the Champions League league phase. Should have shown you the fixtures, by the way. So we start off with Lazio away. Uh, then we've got Levski at uh, home. And then we've got, uh, who we got next? Oh, Villarreal at home as well. Barcelona at home. We had there with Bournemouth, if you remember. Porto away at the Dragao. Uh, and then AIAK in Sweden. And then Sociedad in our final game. It's a trip to the Parc de Prince against P. SG. So, yeah, Champions League League phase this season. Those are our fixtures as we're going for a top eight place and trying to get through without a reason to play a first knockout round tie. So, heading into the game, it is the Lazio away at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. Good start to Dortmund for the season undefeated, but this will be a tough one right now on the injury report. No one is down, but... A few tired legs, but uh, heading into the game, this will be our team. So, Cabell is in going, but for his net, Schlotterbeck, Creswell, and Stridi, with Sammy the Conga getting his first start alongside Mane as a ball winning midfielder. He could definitely do that role. Definitely do that role, no doubt about it. Maybe not his best role, but certainly something he can fill in uh, as. Uh, a third forward, you got company on the left, Romero on the right. Our player of the season thus far, Giovanni Reyn, with six goals already. And up top tonight is Enrique Araujo, not Mukoko. No goals in his last two games. I'm going with the Portuguese striker instead. On the bench, you've got two goalkeepers due to a lack of depth here. Uh, Olszowski and Steiger, uh, Mia Drag, Cruiser, Watjen, Vima, Ozcan, Diaz, Papaz, Dayeo, TL, and Mukoko as well. First of two, it's my first European game with Dortmund. We've got them back in the big time, and let's start off with three points here in Italy. Come on, Dortmund. Yeah, last season, my job with Dortmund was successful. We got them back in the top four. That was all I was hoping for. Obviously, it would have been amazing to win some silverware, but the likelihood in what has been a dominant German football for Bayern was unlikely. But this season, I, I, I would like to win a trophy this year. I really would. As, oh, Samuel Conger almost bent one in on his first start for the club. But you have to say, what would be realistically the best major honour we could win this year? I say the best, the one we got the best chance in. Because I know it sounds crazy, but I think it's probably the Champions League. Bayern are that good and that dominant. And yes, I take the point, we beat them in the Super Cup. But... You know, four wins in four, won the cup last year, dominated the league, won it undefeated. I genuinely believe that we've got more of a chance of winning the Champions League than we do the Bundesliga or possibly even the DFB Pokal. Great start here, though, and we've taken the lead as well. Enrique Araujo off to an amazing start this season. That's his eighth of the year already in all competitions. Luca whips one into the middle, and our number nine converts from close range. 1 0 Dortmund. Nets to La Conga. Good ball to Romero, the former Lazio man. Oh! And he flashes one just wide from Lazio to Bournemouth and now at Dortmund. One of his two former clubs almost gave us a two goal cushion. Very good start this throw from Dortmund. Putting the cat amongst the pigeons early and already a goal up. And one thing I have noticed is that right now, Bayern Munich are 3 0 down at the San Siro against AC Milan. Dominant in Germany, lost the Champions League final last year. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think this year we've got more chance of winning the Champions League than we do the DFB Pokal. That's crazy. Over the top goes the ball for Marcos Leonardo in behind his man. And what a great tackle that is by Schlotterbeck. Chance remains alive on Julian Johns on the edge. Hits the bar, but the rebound is headed in. And Lazio find their leveller. It's going to go to VAR though. Because he might have been offside when the initial shot came in the crossbar. I think he was on. I think it will stand. It will go to VAR though. Does it stand? It does indeed. 1-1. One, one. Stridi crosses. Company. Oh yes. Heads home. is four for the year. And Dortmund back in front. Stefano Stridi has really done well to start this season off. I feel like his, his first half of the season with us last year was a bit of a learning experience for him. New league, new country, new position, lest we forget. But now as a right back, he's got, I think, his third assist of the season already. And I think they've all come with his left foot as well, just shifting it onto his left and then bending it in. He's done it once again, and it is 2-1 Borussia Dortmund. I just felt changing him to right back would be best for him, and it definitely has been. Leading by a goal, should be at least two up, really. But second half to begin, get another, and I think we'll see this game out. 
It's your Stefano. Well done. And our chance for a break here. Lovely ball by Araujo. First time to teal off the bench. There's Enrique Diaz. TL to wrap it up. Oh, great save. A push behind for a corner. Still up by one. Seven minutes to go. Almost there. Almost there. Can we close this out? And that is going to do it. A win on match day one away in Rome. A hug for Scott McTominay. Former club captain and former manager at Bournemouth. Embrace at the full time we saw. But it's Dortmund who leave Lazio all smiles. Three points on match day one. And what a start this season for Enrique Araujo as well. At the moment, he is keeping Yusufa Mukoko on the bench. He's off to a brilliant start. Opening goal of the game and we win it 2-1. Right then, second and final game, Hoffenheim away. I've got to show you a shooter, by the way, in the academy right now. Already a few positive arrows for the 15-year-old, 19 and three-quarter million pound sign. And I can't wait until he turns 16. On my birthday, 29th of November as well, he's going straight in the first team. And he'll make his debut in that game. So he's got a game in the Bundesliga on that day as well. Oh, I'm so excited, honestly. But heading into the game, it's uh, Hoffenheim away from home. They were the first team to beat us last season since joining Borussia Dortmund. So heading into the game here, aiming for a big three points. And to be honest, if we're to have any chance of winning the Bundesliga this season, we have to win practically every single game because we know we'll lose back-to-back -back against Bayern almost definitely. So heading into the game, uh, still with a 4-3-3, but this will be our team now. Cavell's in goal. Back four is Nets, the Dragon, Creswell and Striddy with Cruiser and Oscar and and Joe. Company on the left, Romero on the right and Reina supports Mukoko. No goals in two. I'm going to go with Yusu for today. He desperately needs a goal. On the bench you've got Olszowski, Schlotterbeck, Mane, Watjen, Sambi Lekonga, Vimmer, Diaz, Tiel and Araujo as well. Second final game, Hoffenheim away. Let's keep our winning run going. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. Come on, Mukoko. Spent £80 million on you, mate. And I spent close to 60 on this lad here, Cruz, who's had a great start to the season playing DLP. Back to Nets. Here's Anthony Company. Hefty first touch if he gets it back. Nets to Ozcan. And now Rain has shot the flex. And there is the goal for Mukoko. Now it's going to go to VAR. He might have been a fraction off when the ball came in there. But Yusufa looked as though he's ended his mini goal slump. And it's going to cost me 50k. Yusufa drills in. And yep, the VAR check was a quick one. And it stands. Mukoko gets the goal. And I don't mind splashing the cash. I'd much rather the goals and the three points as well. Mukoko converts from close range. 1-0 Dortmund. That's like the only positive when Mukoko has an off game. If we win and he doesn't score, in a way it's kind of good. Because it means that I'd have to fork out 50k plus for his goal bonuses. But even so, there's the opener. But to be honest, yeah, I'd, I'd rather Mukoko score like three goals in a game and feel good about himself. We we need this guy to be as elite as he ordinarily is if we're going to battle Bayern. You can't beat Bayern Munich with a bunch of kids. You know, we have to have those superstars that are performing regularly if we are to top this league one day. 1-0 and it is Mukoko with a goal. But whilst we are going top for now... We know it will most likely only be for the remainder of the day before Bayern play later. 26 minutes in, looking for that second goal. Creswell to the Dragon inside the centre circle. And now Cruiser to the Dragon. And now Ozcan to Creswell. As we're aiming to work our way forward. Mukoko, lovely touch. Now Stridi plays through Reina. Giovanni, Mukoko, it's two. But it'll be, yeah, definitely disallowed there. The ball played into Reina, but he was offside when the through ball was played. Still 1 0, but Yusufa looks as though he's got a goal scoring touch back. Two minutes after the restart, Hoffenheim need to get a goal back as things stand, still down by one. If we get a second goal, I feel comfortable we'll be able to see this out. But I do see another goal coming soon after this second half begins. And here come Hoffenheim with Wezorike playing a lovely ball across. And what a through ball that was. Kalidio at the far post finishes home 1-1. Well, it's going to go to VAR, but I think he was on there. So, yep, goal stands. And it is indeed level at the Pro Zero Arena. It's okay. It's all right. Going forward, we've been a very good start this season off. We've got an amazing front four, so I expect more chances to fall. Question is, can we take them? Rainer! Oh, Gio! Seventh in seven for our number seven. And he's an absolute thunderbolt for a new American superstar. He's been our best player to start this season off, and that was extraordinary. Stefano with another assist. But he can't really claim he had much involvement in that. Gio takes it all the way and drills it in top bins. Back in front in two minutes. What a goal. Gio, Gio. Now over 100 caps at senior level for the 28-year-old in the prime of his career. Homegrown, trained at a club player, lest we forget. 
And Reyna restores our lead with a Thunderbolt. Now, we get a two-goal Christian and take this game by the scruff of its neck. Stefano, having a great start to the season, finds Romero. Luca through the gap. It's that man again. And it's a brilliant save by Joe Bursic. Tips onto the post, still 2-1. Good game, this. Very good game. As Cruiser wins it back, and now Reina starts to break. It's Romero down the right. Yusufa's in the middle. Can he find him? He can. Yusufa must finish. He does. Bottom corner for Mukoko. It will go VAR, but he was surely onside. Surely. Lovely ball in for a quick counter-attack, and it's Mukoko's second of the game. Oh, what? Offside? He looked on to me. He looked on to me. Fifth goal he had disallowed. Romero played the ball in. Oh, it's tight. It's very tight, but do you know what? We'll trust the lines. 2-1 still in what has been a really good game here. And it's far from finished with 27 minutes to go. Baum got on his free kick. Played short. And worked to Catterback. What a build-up. And Cabell makes the good save. Still 2-1, but there's definitely a fourth goal today. No question. Oh, and it was almost right there. Off the crossbar. Carlton. Crossfield. So Noah Catterback. And Hoffenheim. Have had a really good game here and unlucky to be down by one. I do see there being a fourth goal, but it could go either way. If we get it, I think that'll do it. I think we'll wrap it up. But if Hoffenheim get it, you never know. There may be a very late turnaround for the hosts here. Ahmet plays it out wide to Noah Katterback. Into the middle bound. Gartner! Bottom corner. 2-2. Two -two. It was coming. Hoffenheim level. It will go to VAR. Does this one stand? What a game this has been. 2-2. I think it will stand. No ball inside. And it, no, it's disallowed as well. Two disallowed goals. And it's still 2-1. Blimey, what a game. What a game. Romero over the top. Mukoko to wrap it. Oh, brilliant save by Joe Bursick. And the young Englishman makes the save to keep Hoffenheim hanging on in there. Comedy's had a poor game out there. So going to bring on TL. Even though he's not got LA, uh, a left wing as a listed position, he's a right-footed player with rapid pace as well. So I need to retrain him there as an inside forward. Take off company playing poorly. Alan a booking as well. And I think that will do just for now. Company to Mukoko. And Anthony... Just about to be replaced. Oh, blimey. Thank God he is going off. Because he's had a shocker out there today. Still one up with 13 minutes on the clock. Need to grind this out in order to keep this winning run going. Almost there, but there's got to be a fourth goal in this game. Surely, with all the chances that both teams have created. The Dragon to Cruiser. Back to the Serbian. And now TL off the bench. Skips round one. Great dribbling. Here's Stefano Stridi. And the right back goes for goal and puts it over. Wait for the final whistle to go any second now. Uh, as Gregor takes his time and then launches it long for TL to flick on. And now Reina finds Mukoko, but the flag's definitely up. Wouldn't have mattered anyway as Joe Bursic picks it up. But that will surely do it. Where is that final whistle, ref? I had 30 seconds. Where's that final whistle? There it is. And it is over. Cheeky fist pump for Doxy behind his desk and on the sidelines as well. As we get a big, big grind out of victory away in a tough, grueling battle against Hoffenheim. So we'll go top by two for now. Though Bayern, of course, uh, by one, sorry, though, of course, Bayern will have the game in hand. We'll play that. It will come, I think, is it tonight or is it tomorrow? And then after that, we shall see. Blimey. We are... <laughs> I'm ruining this club's finances, seriously. But we'll see if we stay top. It's very unlikely. It's a late kickoff away against Cologne. And we shall see. Nope, there we go. So our lead at the top lasted for about two hours. Bayern back on top spot with five wins in five. We grind out a one-goal victory away against Hoffenheim. And they thrash Cologne to go back on top spot 100%. Yeah, I'll say it before and I'll say it again. The best chance we've got to win the silverware this year, major silverware, is the Champions League, not the Bundesliga. But that is today's episode, guys. So big thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you had them, please do drop a like. So you'll have a fantastic day. And I see a really good, tasty double header there. Villarreal and Schalke. Two really good ties there. I think we'll come back with that one there. Champions League and Bundesliga. Big double header against two strong European sides. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you next episode of the Football Manager Save. Very soon.